Is the clerk ready for minutes? It is five minutes past seven, and at this point I will uh, continue the public hearing for the purpose of hearing comments from the public with regards to a 2014 Community Development Block Grant. Is there anyone wishing to address the board on potential projects that should be um, entered into the grant application? Mr. Karen Cleveland. Do you have a focus on a project that the board is actually looking at? What is the block grant? I mean, is there something that you need? I think we're looking at um, one potential um, grant application, uh, we were just talking about that in a workshop. Uh, one is to revisit an application we submitted previously, which is to improve water line um, on Broadway, really f um, from the intersection of 9G and Broadway going west up to the bridge. That was identified by our superintendent last year as a need. That's one potential. Uh, the other uh, potential application that I discussed with the board is possibly uh, replacing some of the water meters in the village. Some of the water meters are aging and some um, are weren't working properly and trying to repair them and get them working uh, efficiently uh, has sometimes been an issue. Also to upgrade them to be able to read them electronically. electronically. Because the software for the billing is moving that direction. Yeah. Right now, DPW goes around with a pad and paper, jots down everybody's reading. They're then handed over to the clerk's office who then manually enters the information. One of the issues we'd like to look at is a gun um, that goes up and scans the actual meter and um, then that gun is then brought back to the clerk's office and that information can then be um, entered into a system. The water bills could go out that way. It saves um, room for error and time and energy that Jim Simmons or his staff are going at reading, reading meters. Because I think those two things probably, I think, are a priority. Agreed. Agreed. The infrastructure really concerns me with the number of water breaks that we have. Mm -hmm. all it all does us as well. It's all yeah. good. Right as far as choosing that section of our water system, I mean, that's serving the entire village, bringing the water in from the well fields. So, right. wow. The whole system needs some work. That's kind of the trunk of the tree. Right, and that came on the advice of Jim Simmons, who knows these water lines with the back of his hand. So. Anyone else? If there are uh, no other, go ahead. We'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that one um, in the regular board meeting. Yeah, give me a moment because we'll come back to that. This is just uh, public comment on possible um, grant applications uh, for the CDBG. But we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Give me 30 seconds and then you can discuss it. Um, so for the record, if there are no other comments, uh, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing at 8 minutes past 7. So, so. Motion's been made by the Deputy Mayor and seconded by Trustee Azrati. Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. It is eight minutes past seven, and I hereby call the September board meeting of the Village Tivoli Board of Trustees to order, which please rise for the congratulations. Bring us the flag. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you all very much. At this point, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules to allow the public to address the board on agenda items only. So motion has been made by the deputy mayor. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, yes, the board has to authorize me to 
submit any sort of grant. I, have, I say me because the mayor has to sign this particular document. Um, so we'll entertain the approval from the board. This is a 75-25. In other words, 75% of it would be paid by FEMA. 25% would have to be paid by the village of Tivoli. However, we looked into it. Um, that 25% does not have to be a monetary fee. It could be uh, work that we do on our own, using our own equipment, using our own men, our own, our own resources. Um, the village board has seen photos. They've been over there, obviously, to see uh, that uh, to, to, to see that result after after heavy storms, so we're very um, concerned about it. And um, other municipalities have received this FEMA funding. I was just at the conference of mayors the other day. I spoke with one of the mayors uh, who have re has received this. I want to say he received about three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars in funding. Um, so it is something that FEMA is doing right now, based on previous storms. I think we've got the documentation. And we also reached out to FEMA as well to see, is this something that we should consider? And they said yes. So hence, I'm asking the board for their approval right now. So we're hopeful um, that we would receive the funding uh, for this. Now, keep in mind, we did it with the federal government. <laughs> so it may take a little while uh, to come in. That was one of the issues they did tell me. But I think we've got the documentation. What we may do as well is seek other input from village residents in the development um, to, uh, to receive uh, input as to why we should, we should do that. Okay. Any other comments on uh, agenda items? Seeing none, a motion to return to regular business. So moved. Motion has been made by Trustee Azrati. Second. And seconded by Trustee Bruno. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That lights are bright. I apologize, everybody. Um, next item on the agenda is a village clerk's report. Clerk and Ellen. She's in the dark over there, so please light her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the clerk's office sold 529 trash bags. We attended a planning board meeting and a planning board workshop. There were two public hearings last week. And we revised the voucher delivery system for the board meetings, um, which you know, they're now delivered electronically, which is saving time. The other issue with regards to the clerk's report, if I could add, um, we have previously gone out to a uh, private vendor to have our garbage tags um, printed off um, by going with the Dutchess County printing. Uh, it will be a cost to the village. Um, so we're going to turn the printing of the garbage. It'll still be yellow, maybe a little different color. It'll still be yellow. There'll still be stickers. It'll still look the same. But we're going to save some money by going to Dutchess County with regards to having them printed off. In addition, we're getting a lot of our paper supplies, paper towels, toilet paper, that sort of thing, uh, through Dutchess County. And we're also looking to purchase some more materials, toner, uh, and some other materials through Dutchess County Central Services. So a lot of the other municipalities are joining in with this, and uh, we're getting a much better rate um, through Dutchess County than we are with private uh, vendors. Obviously, we don't want to not give business to local vendors, um, but right now we have to look at every dollar and cent and where we can save money, uh, we have to. So thank you uh, to the clerk's office uh, for that. Moving on uh, to approval of the minutes. Uh, there are village uh, minutes for September 11th, which are public hearing minutes, as well as um, a regular board meeting uh, as well from uh, August. I was unable to... I can't hear you. Two sets. Two sets of public hearings. Uh, one regarding the bus stop, I apologize, and one is a uh, public comment on uh, CDBG for 2011, and of course, your regular board meeting minutes uh, from the previous month. We have all had an opportunity to review those minutes as submitted. At this point, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the treasurer's report, Clerk and Ellen. At this point, I would entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Motion has been made by the deputy mayor. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion? Uh, well, I just noticed signing one voucher that uh, we did spend a 
considerable amount on policing this month. We do contract with the county sheriffs, and we've had extra patrols, and it does come at a cost. So um, I, hope, I hope we're getting our money's worth, and it's made a difference because it's not cheap. It's not. We've put additional uh, patrol on um, as we routinely do this time of year, and uh, we will look at uh, uh, policing uh, going into the next month. Um, the mayor is vested with the authority to um, increase or not uh, uh, increase police patrols, but we've been doing this in consultation with the board. Uh, we felt this time of year was a good time to uh, increase uh, police coverage, and uh, we'll look at our coverage as, um, as the year, uh, year goes on. So. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the actual approval of payment of the bills. At this point, I entertain a motion to approve payment of this month's bills. So moved. Motion has been made by Trustee Azradi and seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Trustee Azradi, a zoning report. Um, there was a, um, a building permit to put on a roof mounted solar system, so Sounds we're good. becoming more <laughs> ecologically conscious uh, in the village. And in addition to that, uh, a couple of um, building permits were uh, approved or closed down by having an inspection. Total fees collected was fifty dollars. Um, in addition to that, we get into CLO fees. Fees added up to it looks like one hundred dollars. Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> Moving on, um, I have tabled um, item number two until it is reviewed um, by council, and I will reintroduce that um, in the coming coming weeks. Um, number three, we talked about it a few moments ago. This is seeking the approval of the village board for me to submit an application um, to the Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency for the purpose of receiving mitigation funding as it pertains to drainage issues uh, within Tivoli Acres. So at this point, I entertain a motion to approve that application. So moved. Motion has been made by the deputy mayor. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? One of the uh, issues that uh, we'll also be doing uh, with regards to FEMA, uh, this FEMA application, um, is cleaning out that long stream uh, that runs through uh, the development. Uh, we're going to clean out as much as we possibly can ourselves, and then um, we're going to have to hire an outside firm to come in uh, to clean that out um, as well. Because um, there's certain things growing in there that we just can't. One thing I would ask village residents is please do not dump any branches, leaves, anything else back there because when you do dump items back there, it clogs it up and the water um, cannot run. But um, we are aware that that's starting to really get overgrown and we're going to be cleaning that out, as I said, uh, with both in-house and an outside source. Um, since this is a FEMA application, I would uh, request a roll call vote. Trustee Isradi? Aye. Trustee Bruno? Aye. Deputy Mayor Griffith? Aye. Trustee Schneider? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda was election by the Village of Tivoli to be a participant in the Dutchess County Self-Insured Workers' Compensation Plan. I have pulled this resolution and tabled it um, for further consideration um, at another time. Next item on the agenda is a letter that we have received from the Village Engineer Morris Associates with regards to repairing the roof uh, at uh, Village Hall. And at this point, I return the floor over to the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, so we have solicited three uh, bids. This is to repair the um, asphalt flat roof over the addition on the back of Village Hall, which uh, having been built in 94 is almost 20 years old. And unfortunately, the leaking of that roof uh, has largely contributed to the uh, breaking of the elevator. So we've got a whole uh, not to unravel um, in that addition. And obviously, first we have to start with the roof 
before we put a new elevator in there. So um, after a lot of work and a lot of uh, help from Morris Associates, the uh, village engineering firm, I have here the letter of uh, recommendation from them. This is for an EPDM roof repair project. And they are recommending that we award this to uh, Superior Roofing out of Saugerties. Um, their quote is uh, $16,300. Um, and Morris goes on to say, after contra contacting each contractor to discuss the methodology of their approach and the materials proposed to be used to solve the roof problems, we recommend awarding the work to Superior Roofing. Even though they were not the lowest bid, and I'll come to that in a second, their approach to resolve the leaks and the ability to provide a 20-year warranty appears to be the best benefit to the village of Tivoli. Uh, there was a lower bid. Um, well, the second bid was 16.45, uh, and there were lower bids from another firm um, out of Hyde Park, which were uh, about half the price, 8,800. However, it is for a very different roofing material. Um, and it's not the same kind of roofing material that was originally up there. And, and the uh, engineering firm is advising us it's best to go with the uh, same kind of roofing it had. And in particular, they felt that uh, superior roofing uh, was most cognizant and prepared to address um, the caulking and flashing. Uh, that addition has a parapet wall up top, which is very handsome, but um, is a little harder to keep watertight. Um, so that is the recommendation from uh, Morris, and uh, if we can award this bid, then we can get onto the elevator, which is something we would like to get onto. Our hope, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump on no, you. No, um, our hope is that as soon as this is done, then we can start the elevator, uh, start the elevator work. Um, it's do not we a also have to do the groundwater uh, drainage. Right, issue? there's a drainage yeah. issue that we can do in house, um, but. It's not a large footprint upstairs on, the, on that roof, so our hope is that this isn't going to be uh, a long process. We know what we need to do with the roof, we know what we need to do with the elevator and the drainage. So we want to be back home <laughs> as soon as we can. Um, can you get it done before street cleaning? Because I've got chalk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lower it down. We'll lower it down. Um, but since this is in reference to a bond issue, I would like a uh, roll call vote. But before we do that, all in favor of accepting uh, the superior, uh, uh, a motion to accept the superior roof? Uh, it's so moved. A motion's we, been made. Thank we you. accept the recommendation of Morrison Associates. Motion's been made by Trustee Azradi. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, a roll call vote. Trustee Azradi? Aye. Trustee Bruno? Aye. Deputy Mayor Griffith? Aye. Trustee Schneider? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, two days ago, I received a uh, letter that um, I was saddened to receive from our village historian, Bernie Teeger, uh, who is announcing his retirement uh, as village historian. Uh, Bernie has served uh, through three uh, administrations as the village's uh, historian and um, a fine gentleman and quite, quite um, a dedicated uh, citizen here in the village of Tivoli. Uh, if you have not had an opportunity to uh, read Bernie's uh, book, please do get a copy of, um, of, of Bernie's book. There's a great uh, painting on the front cover by our patron laureate. Um, but Bernie is just a man of character know so much about the village of Tivoli and uh, his service to this village um, is, uh, is, has been exemplary and former really trustee. former trustee, professor uh, at Bard and um, a very dedicated individual. Um, so I accept um, his, uh, his letter. Um, I have tasked trustees Isradi and um, Schneider uh, to sit on a panel um, to interview potential candidates. Uh, New York State law empowers the mayor of the village to appoint a village historian, uh, but I would like to get as many opinions as I can, so I've asked trustees Schneider and Bruno uh, to lead this um, committee, and I would uh, accept uh, any interest uh, from any particular village resident. State law says you have to be a village uh, resident. Um, we will have something in the village office as well as on our village webpage as to what the requirements are uh, for a village historian. It's, a, it's an abyssed position because typically a village of a thousand people has at least three, perhaps four, published histories, um, which, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're getting longer each time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
but um, again, it's it's um, it's uh, bittersweet. I know that Bernie um, uh, has been uh, our village historian for a long time, and and uh, is is running his business. And uh, I do accept his letter, but I uh, wish he would stay on. But I understand. So Bernie, thank you uh, very much. My thanks to Trustees Bruno and and uh, Israel. Uh, the next uh, village board meeting uh, will be held uh, October 16th at seven o'clock. There will be a workshop prior at six. We'll be here at the Legion. There will be a, yes, Councilor, I just remembered, there will be a um, regular workshop on Wednesday, October 9th. Before um, I get into trustee reports and Council and Trustees Ryder talk about another issue, um, wanted to let you know, um, we said that we would be cracking down on residents uh, who are not adhering to village ordinances, and that is noise violations, open container, not uh, bringing your trash bins in, if you've got garbage in your front yard, if you're not mowing your lawn, uh, we were going to send you a violation. And this uh, is a stack of violation notices that have gone out from the village clerk's office. I've been going around, other trustees have been going around, we've been noting the violations, we've been knocking on people's doors and saying get your garbage pails in, move your car, quiet it down. We've been doing this in concert also with the sheriff's office and zoning office. Um, we want people to live here, we want people to live here for a lifetime or if you're just learning a trade or going to school or visiting, we want people to live here. Um, but you have to obey the ordinances and if you're not going to pay the, obey the ordinances there's going to be a penalty. And I was serious when I said it, I meant it, and here's the proof. And um, we're not going to tolerate it anymore. Um, people who aren't obeying our ordinances, and if you're disrupting the character of our village, you're going to pay a price. So we want people to live here, we want people to feel welcome, but you need to adhere to the laws um, that are in place. And if you don't, there's going to be a consequence uh, to pay. And if they are not familiar with what the ordinances may be, it's online, the village code. Uh, there's a welcome packet available at the clerk's office which contains everything related to bringing your trash cans in off the sidewalk, shoveling the snow, parking, uh, permits. parking permits, it's, it's the information is available if you're not familiar with it, um, it's online and at the clerk's office so that there are no surprises when we say you're expected to do this and yeah. so please uh, inform yourself if you're not, um, thank you. Thank you. Now, there is also <laughs> a resolution that uh, we need to discuss tonight. Uh, there was a executive session that I had uh, with village board members and, and council uh, with the potential of uh, acquisition of a possible um, parcel uh, that is attached to existing uh, village property. At this point, I return the floor over uh, to village council, and I'll ask Trustee Israeli to talk us through some of the uh, mechanics afterwards. So, council? Trustees, Roger, do you want to talk about the process that the planning board will undertake uh, with this? Well, basically, this is a parcel which has the potential to come become available as, to us as a result of a, a tax lien. It is contiguous to the parcel that we have a purchase and sale agreement for at the waterfront, um, and it's a, a, it's, it's a good parcel for the village to add. To, to that. Uh, the process is that um, it will require a seeker finding and um, consistency with the local waterfront revitalization plan. So the village board will need to refer this issue to the planning board who will be meeting Monday night um, and we'll ask them to review this. Um, saying that, that in many ways this review is similar to that for the parcel which is, which is aligned with, that we've already been through. Um, then we will review that recommendation in a special meeting so that we can be prepared to purchase this parcel in a timely way because there is an urgency about this issue. <clears throat> 
Do you want to make a motion? Um, I move that. Yes. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Basically, moving this on to planning board. The motion's been made by Trustee Azradi. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made by Trustee. Uh, second's been made by Trustee Bruno. I would like a roll call vote on this as well. Trustee Azradi. Aye. Trustee Bruno. Aye. Deputy Mayor Griffith. Aye. Trustee Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to committee reports, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I'll uh, begin with the water report. Uh, we significant news. Uh, there was a water main break on Woods Road on August 28th. Um, obviously, has been repaired. Um, the as far as the wells, the ball lot was off the entire month. McKnight was uh, putting out, let's see, about seven gallons per minute. Put out 316,000 gallons over the month. 2PW was on the uh, entire 31 days of August, averaging seven gallons, putting out 326,000. Uh, 5PW was on about a third of the month, put out 153,000 gallons um, at an average of seven per minute. Uh, the 4PE and 10PE wells were on all month, averaging 14 gallons per minute for a total of 640,000 gallons. And the Woodmark wells, um, varied quite a bit from 15 gallons to 19 gallons on a given day uh, for a total of 791,000 gallons in the month of August. And our water systems operation report um, came in with no violations or red flags. Um, the sidewalk CDBG, uh, which you've been hearing about for quite a while, uh, the county released the final permit to our contractor, Sunup Enterprises. Um, two days ago, uh, they've already been bringing some of their uh, heavy equipment to the staging area, and uh, that's a good sign. It means they're about to actually get started. So again, uh, if you're unaware, the uh, map of the sidewalk sections to be repaired is uh, at the village crier, uh, the town crier, and um, it's available at the clerk's office. These are sections on Broadway, uh, sort of near St. Sylvia's. A uh, section um, in front of the bakery across from the post office where it's very mealy. Uh, that's going to get redone. And um, basically coming into town from the bridge up towards uh, the laundromat on that side. Uh, and finally, the uh, entire length of Washburn Avenue is getting a new sidewalk. So uh, we're really excited that's finally starting. Uh, and particularly that Broadway section has to be done in time for street painting. <laughs> um, and uh, we, the DPW has been um, continuing some work on the, uh, at the bus shelter. Um, there are some potholes and kind of drainage problems there um, on that shoulder, which obviously is going to be having both the Bard College shuttle and the county loop bus pulling over there um, all day, every day. So uh, it's occurred to us we need to make some improvements there. Their DPW is going to uh, grade it to create a better drainage so we don't form potholes, and they're going to be putting down some gravel. Uh, I think they're going to be working on that tomorrow. So, uh, and that is uh, all I have. Thank you. I want to say something about Washburn, if I could. Um, I received some negative criticism uh, from residents as to why are you worrying about Washburn? There's a lot of rentals on Washburn. Why are you taking care of Washburn? Well, the village's response to that is that if we're not going to take care of Washburn, how can we expect village residents to take care of Washburn? Um, it is a part of the village. There's a lot of old homes uh, on there. And um, it's an important part of the village, just like any street is. So we can't, in good faith, go to residents who live on Washburn and say, cut your grass, bring your barrels in, bring the garbage in off. We can't go to them and say, take care of your property if we're not going to take care of the property. Um, so I stand by this board's decision uh, to repair uh, the sidewalks uh, that we are repairing. Um, we would have liked to have repaired more. We only had $100,000 um, in this um, grant application. Um, but I stand by this board's decision to repair the sidewalks that we're repairing, and we will repair more um, as we can. Um, same thing with infrastructure throughout Tivoli Acres and throughout the village. Um, we can't expect you as residents to take care of your property and keep your property up if we're not. So we have a report from our village engineer, a former village engineer, uh, about two months ago with regards to CHIPS funding, that's Community Highway Improvement Program. We have about $68,000 in CHIPS funding that this village can use to go through and repair infrastructure. 
we're taking care of some of the infrastructure on, on Pine Street. Uh, we're looking at some of the repairs um, in the development and some other areas throughout the village. So we're going to take care of repairs just so you can take care of repairs as well. It's got to be a, a two-way street, um, no pun intended. But again, I stand by this village's uh, recommendation uh, and to what we did on that. So, um, Trustee Israti, I think you're bursting at the seams to talk to us about something coming up. In case you haven't heard it, we have a street <laughs> painting festival on the 5th of October. That's a Saturday. Um, and my friend Joel here is going to be there early in the morning painting along with a number of other people. If that is something you have a great need to do, let me <laughs> Get up know, early on a Saturday. because <laughs> we can use a few more volunteers. Um, we do go in, we clean the streets ahead of time, and then we lay out squares and we paint them with tempera paint, uh, set up a table, give away free chalk, and invite about 275 artists and uh, their friends and family in, um, and then all of us get to go at the end of the day and look at what they've done. It's a great festival, a lot of fun. Um, be sure to be there. Uh, the next time we meet, it will have been done, so, so I have to uh, talk about that. We've had great financial support from our businesses this year, so I know that it's good for them because um, you send them a letter and they ask for money and they send it. So, <laughs> how many is so, this now? What year uh, is this? this is 13. So, 2013 is the 13th. And this is an absolute, this is a grant through Dutchess County Arts Council that we continue to receive year after right. year after we year. We got support from BARD, we got support mm -hmm. from um, village businesses, village individuals. Um, what time should they? Should we be there um, on Saturday? The, the festival starts at 9 o'clock. You may see people arriving before that, but we can try to get organized by then. But um, the painting of the squares, uh, I'm sorry. We highly recommend that you pre-register if you want a square. We're going to hand the squares on out sort of as you arrive, but if you pre-register, you get to get a special line <laughs> and you move through um, faster. So. Uh, and it also helps us get a good count and um, see familiar faces. My, and my favorite, my favorite, all-time favorite is Irene Kuhn, who lives in Stamfordville. Um, and she calls me in June to see if she's missed pre-registration. <laughs> <laughs> and she and three other ladies, all of who have seen their sixth decade go, come and go, I mean, they sit on the ground and they uh, do wonderful art. So. And what time are we painting the actual squares? What time should people get there Nine if they want to volunteer? Nine o'clock to paint the Nine actual squares? When they register. No, no, what to two? So no, for the people who so, are doing yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Seven. Okay, thank you. Seven o'clock. And there are 130 squares to get painted. Oh, 130. Yeah. Well, so we have to get 130 ones, painted before 9 o'clock, so yeah, come help me. And then the ones down the middle, we sort of do it. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, okay. Um, I had something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, LOSAP, our Length of Service Award program, now has $90,000 in the program for the 21 active firefighters uh, in Tivoli. It's a program that started in 2007. Um, and we've been putting in $500 a piece uh, for that period of time, and we've had some good investment results. We also pay out uh, about $1,500 to $2,000 a year to people who have reached the age of 65 and participated in the program. Um, so that's good stuff going on. Our planning and zoning boards are meeting regularly. They've got some interesting things that they're, that they're dealing with, um, including, for example, um, a house on the waterfront for, for which a demolition permit has been requested. Um, if you want to know what's going on with changes in the landscape, um, come on Monday night and see what they're doing. It's a great group. Um, and the fire department has been working hard on their budget and uh, they're getting, they're doing a lot of training, especially the rescue squad. So. 
there's a lot of training that's required for volunteers. It's amazing the amount of hours that are required um, for volunteer firemen and rescue squad especially. So my thanks to both the, the captain and the chief of the fire and rescue squads for um, the dedication of their members because that's a lot of training for, for the rescue squad. So they, they, go they for yeah. 20 hours at a time. Yeah. Yes. Out of their own pocket. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So we're up and running. Yeah. Well, they're not. I thought they were sent, so we'll have it for you. Trustee Brenner. Okay, batter up. Um, speaking of batter up, I uh, there's one other activity going on uh, on October 5th. So if you're here for street painting, which is something that you definitely do not want to miss, it's an incredible day. You can uh, paint your square, and then also over in the park, which we, we've been working on continuously, um, the men's softball league is having their end of the season. Uh, bash, if you will, but there's a, a game, but also they have this huge uh, home run derby that they're going to be having, and apparently it's it's a whole lot of fun to watch. So if you're here for street painting, mosey on over into the park, and uh, I guess it's supposed to be a really fun That's thing. Fun. Nice. Yeah. So that could be uh, <clears throat> something for people to uh, attend. And uh, in the park, we're still working on uh, getting things repaired from our uh, bout with some local vandals. But we're moving. We are moving forward. Uh, community programs. Tivoli Rec is planning a Halloween party for Saturday, October 26th. There'll be lots of information on that. Uh, for the veterans, there's nothing um, specific coming up along lines of events, but uh, the Masons, the last Sunday of the month, breakfast, they have those. 8 to 12? Is that 8 what it to 12. Is? It is, yep. And. Um, our library, stop in, see what they have to offer. There's a lot of programs coming up for the fall. And um, they finished up their uh, summer reading program. And they've done a lot with, uh, with the youth. And I think. I don't want to speak for Trustee Schneider. We start to identify um, local businesses and artists uh, in the area to put together. Uh, something I talked about at my State of the Village uh, this year was really a Tivoli uh, Business and Artist uh, Association with the uh, Slominski Inski and the Madeline Hotel now have been uh, bought again and Luna 61 and all of the restaurants that we have in the local artist. We're going to be working on a group of uh, folks that we can sort of work together to really promote the village. Um, you know, possible ideas uh, that I had is that you see a particular show in the village Tivoli, whether well, it's at the theater or an artist um, exhibit, and you show a ticket that you went there, and then you go over to one of the local establishments uh, to get a discount on drinks or an appetizer or something like that. We've got a lot of local talent here in the village of Tivoli, and uh, that's something that we're going to be uh, working on together to promote the village. Um, I just came back uh, from Saratoga last week at the Conference of Mayors, and you see that all over the place in, this, in the city of Saratoga Springs, where the businesses are complimenting and, and promoting each other. And I've had some soft conversations with local business owners, and there seems to be a positive uh, vibe about that, especially with the hotel about to be reopened, Luna 61, and the continuing uh, theater programs that you have here um, at the Carpenter Shop Theater. So our hope is to get that up and running probably about another month. Um, so uh, stay tuned, uh, stay tuned for that. I didn't mean to speak for you, but um, anything else? Oh. Charge volume summary report. Uh, it's for charges from August 1st through August 31st, 2013. Uh, charges received were a uh, total of three, and charges disposed total 21. Total money collected and remitted to the state comptroller uh, fines $810, surcharges $550, civil fees 55 
uh, totaling $1,415. Thank you, Trustee Schneider. Anything else from the board? At this point, I would entertain uh, comments from anyone wishing to address the board on <coughs> any issue you wish. Yes, Karen Cleveland. First of all, I, this is probably the nicest September that I've spent in the village in a very long time. And I thank you for everything you have done to make this a very nice I do too. I think we all would agree about that. So thank you. Thank you for saying that. Thank yeah, you for your patience. I have one thing that I'd like to propose, and uh, it's not a very costly thing to propose. The traffic on Broadway could be visible part of the city of Broadway pretty fast. And I'm sure that Broadway's not the only street that people see. But I'm not sure that the Broadway is the only street that people see. But I think what we need to do is appropriate one, maybe two crosswalks painted on the street. One in particular going to the park from Broadway mm. and taking it up by the post office. And if you put a crosswalk and put a cone like Redwood does, it tends to slow traffic down a little bit, make people more aware that they might be pedestrians crossing. And I can't imagine that painting the street would be that costly. Um, what, I, what I'll do is take that, because it's not our road, um, what I would do is take it to the county. Um, you know, we'll discuss it uh, amongst ourselves and then take that, you know, that's something the board wants to do, take that suggestion on um, onto the county. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rhinebeck's recently put some in as well on, on Route 9, and they're very effective. Yeah. I read it. Mm -hmm. we, ha we have been talking about refurbishing the crosswalks uh, on the corner of Pine Street, which is our road, so we can take action uh, without talking to anyone else. Um, there, that stamped brick, uh, the paint has faded, um, and so we're anticipating getting those repainted white stripes on either side, um, and we're just, uh, the timing of it with the sidewalk construction and the staging area, we thought we'd paint it after the big machines are done there, but uh, that's that's on our list. I'm sure you're thinking about the main four corners for us all students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we have a couple different options that we're looking at uh, with regards to the four corners. Uh, they had done some repair during Mayor Cordier's tenure. Um, they pulled up all of the brick, put sand down, and then unfortunately a couple years later it sunk again. So we've got a couple different uh, options um, that, we're, that we're looking at. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other comments? Mr. Cleveland. I oh, I thought you were nodding. I'd like to see your list of like a, <laughs> My what? Your, your list of violators. You're on it. <laughs> no, I saw him knowing today. <laughs> but it's not for anything you would think. <laughs> Any other comments? If there... It's very funny you should bring that up. Um, seriously, no, no, I, no, I mean, it, not funny, but timing, you're, you're right on. Um, I just reached out, and I think I copied the board, or I copied you on it, to the uh, director of Dutchess County Emergency Response uh, with regards uh, to a plan. Um, and I also spoke to Supervisor Sue Crane about this as well. There is a committee that uh, Red Hook has from the town of Red Hook, the village of Red Hook, and Bard College, and I've asked to be part of that committee so that we could start having our own plan in place to be prepared in the event of a hurricane, tornado, or earthquake. Who thought we would be talking about that here in Tivoli? But uh, when you look at the last two years, um, uh, we want to, we want to be ready. Uh, so I have a meeting coming up with Sue Crane and Ed Blundell, and um, we'll be we'll be part of that committee uh, with regards to having some sort of prepared 
plan in place. I will tell you that during um, the last hurricane, or the first hurricane uh, that we had, um, as we were heading into that hurricane, as this storm was coming, we were in constant contact with Dutchess County Emergency Response, Bard College, the town, the village of Red Hook, and uh, the school district, and the chief of fire and rescue, and DPW. So we were as ready as we possibly could be, and as well as conversations with former mayors Cordier, Nice, and Molinaro. We were ready. Um, I can't think of anything uh, that we missed. We, we came out ready, but we want to have a plan in place because, you know, down by the river, I don't know if anybody knew when we had the last storm, that water was coming up over those um, railroad. Uh, tracks, thank you, uh, significantly. There was damage down there, so we want to be ready. So we're going to be part of that committee. You know, we'll have an additional committee here in the village because one of the things we talked about at the Conference of Mayors last week is having your own committee. In addition to having village personnel there, we would have representatives from different parts of the village and one would be bringing in, you know, someone who has a building background or an engineering background, architectural background, uh, to sort of do a review of the entire village to look at issues like that. That was something that was discussed. So we want to be ready, but we're, we're uh, timing, we just talked about this um, last week, I guess, was I emailed you. So yeah. So. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. They do. Um, we f we routinely flush. We we do. And let me tell you why you're not seeing it done because because you're sleeping. Um, we routinely flush and do maintenance on the on the hydrants, uh, but we do it at night because we don't want to start flushing lines during the day because if you go to pour a glass of water, you're going to have brown water for a while. So we routinely do that and what we do is we, 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 we note to the areas where we're going to be checking or flushing and we, we post it up there so you don't do a load of wash, or you don't drink, you don't, don't cook with it. So uh, let folks know that we do check it. There is some hesitation on certain hydrants that we know are working. When you do check them, our concern is because they are aging, if you if you if it's not done properly, you you, you could cause a water main break or a water main leak. Um, you can drain the tower in about an hour. That tower can drain in about an hour and a half if it's not done properly. So we do check them, we do do maintenance, and we do uh, we do flush them uh, on on a routine basis. So let folks know the reason they're not seeing it is because you're asleep. <laughs> Are there yeah? Are there any other comments from the village uh, residents? If there are none, at this point I entertain a motion to adjourn in memory of those uh, who were um, killed the other day at the Naval Yard. So moved. Motion has been made by the Deputy Mayor. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. 7.53. Thank you all. Thank you very much.